Appreciate it. Welcome once again uh, to our midweek Bible study. John says in 1 John uh, chapter 3 and verse number 2, he says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. How many of you are looking forward to seeing Jesus? Amen. 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 There's a whole lot of folk I want to see, but number one on my list is my Lord and Savior, Jesus yes, the Christ. And so we're grateful that you are here. We pray that you likewise are looking forward to seeing his face in peace uh, when he calls us from labor to reward. And if uh, perchance you are with us and you're not in a saved relationship with the Lord, you can be even unto this day through the obedience of of the gospel, which we certainly shall discuss. We want to pick up our study in the book of Numbers. If you have your Bibles, your copy of God's divine word, Numbers chapter number 11. Numbers chapter number 11. We are making some uh, progress in this book. Lots of gems and jewels excavated uh, through the study of God's divine word. In chapter number 11, we see that the people of God were complaining and the Bible lets us know in verse number one of chapter number 11, and the Lord heard it, for the Lord heard it. God hears uh, whatever's going on. There's nothing that takes place in this life that is outside of the awareness of Almighty God. And so when God heard the complaining, a great fire uh, broke out and many of the children of Israel had lost their lives. We see also in chapter number 11, around verse number three, that and four, that this uh, verse number four in particular uh, was provoked by the mixed multitude uh, who yielded to the in intense uh, cravings. We have to be very uh, cognizant uh, of those desires that are outside of God's divine word. Uh, and so they yielded, which is a song we used to sing, yield not. Uh, to temptation for yielding. Uh, amen. So, so we have to be mindful of that. And then the Bible says in verse number four, so the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat uh, to eat? Well, I suggest to all of us that the same who that brought them out is the same who that's going to bring them in, the same who that's sustaining them in the midst of uh, their troubled trials and tribulations in the wilderness. And so, uh, it's amazing how God has always been before them, uh, particularly on uh, their journey uh, from Egypt uh, to the land of Canaan, the promised land, uh, visibly before them, pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. And then they have the audacity to say, who will give us meat uh, to eat? And so we talked about that and we talked about uh, the manna that God had given them in verse number seven. Now the manna was like ordinary seed uh, and its color like the color of bedlam. Uh, the people went about gathering it on the ground. They grinded it. They beat it. They cooked it. Uh, they made cakes of it. Uh, the taste of it was like a pastry uh, prepared in oil. Uh, and so oftentimes, um, at least in the Psalms, uh, the manna was described as angel's bread. So God had given them uh, food to eat in a wilderness, and all they had to do was to gather. Uh, but they got weary of God's food. They were loathsome of God's food. They began to complain and, and talk trash about God's food. Uh, and so there was a, a serious uh, problem. Now, that brings us to where we uh, pick up on this evening. Verse number 10. After all of that complaining, verse number 10. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was uh, displeased. And so this is a very... A vivid picture of what's taking place in the wilderness. You know, they're all centered around the tabernacle in the mid, in the midst, and three tribes to the north, south, east, and the west. Uh, and so the Bible lets us know that everyone was at the door of their tent, uh, and, and they were uh, weeping. In verse number 
11, uh, Moses uh, has a dialogue with the Lord. Moses said to the Lord, why have you afflicted your servant and why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden or the responsibility of all these people on me? Moses is saying this is too much uh, to bear. Now, when they did not have uh, food to eat, they uh, put the burden on Moses. When they didn't have uh, water to drink, they put the burden on Moses. Uh, when they get weary, they put the burden on Moses. Any Anything of discomfort, uh, they began to complain about, uh, and they took the matters uh, to Moses. And Moses is saying that this is too much uh, for me to bear. You got over two million of the uh, children of Israel, and they're all looking to one man. Uh, and Moses is following God. Uh, and so Moses is feeling the, the burden uh, of leadership, the burdens of uh, of leadership, you know, uh, oftentimes people complain and uh, one person that they often complain about is whoever's leading, you know, and so Moses is getting the uh, tip of the spear uh, of the frustrations, the anxieties, uh, the displeasure of the people as they complain, you know, if you give them a little water, they say that's little, that's too little water, give them too much water, that's too much water, you give them angels bread, they want meat, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And so we talked last week about complaining and how God is not pleased uh, with complaining. Complaining is sinful. And we looked at that certainly in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul describes for the saints there in Corinth that what is taking place in our reading here uh, was written for our learning. That we will not fall in the same transgression or the same pitfalls. Uh, that they fell into. And so it's very important that we not only read the word, but we heed the word, that we apply the word of God to our lives because uh, we are human just like they are human. Uh, but we see where they uh, went overboard or uh, they went off track and uh, that's what not to do. And so we need to learn from those things as Romans 15 and 4 says, those things that were written aforetime. Now, uh, in verse number 12, Moses uh, further says, uh, did I conceive all these people? Moses saying, these folk, these are not my children. These aren't, these ain't my children. They, they, you know, uh, they, 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 these folk, you know, these are your people. They ain't, they're not my children. Uh, did I beget them, uh, that you should say to me, uh, carry them in your bosom uh, as a guardian, care, guardian carries a nursing child, uh, to the land, which you swore to their fathers. He says in verse 13, here comes Moses, where am I to give meat uh, to give to all these people? So they asked the question. We read that earlier in um, uh, verse number four, who will give us meat to eat? And here's Moses uh, responding, where am I uh, to give uh, to get meat uh, to give to all these people? For they weep all over me saying, give us meat that we may uh, eat. In verse number 14, he goes a little bit further in his frustrations. He says, I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. He says, and then he says, if you treat me like this, um, he says, um, uh, please kill me here and now if I have not found favor in your sight and do not let me see my wretchedness. Uh, how many of you have been burdened? Uh, by life or burdened by uh, frustrations, trials and tribulations and, and just feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm at my wit's end. Enough is enough. How many of you have been to the place called enough is enough? Yes. You know, there, 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 there's a place called enough is enough. Yes, it is. You know, and, and Moses, Moses reached that place. And you and I have gotten to uh, some places called enough is enough, you know. Uh, too much of these children cutting up, uh, too little money. Hey, hey Amen. I got all of these responsibilities, uh, too little of this, too little of that, and everything hitting you all at the same time. And so, uh, Moses is taking his burdens, uh, to the Lord. Uh, and so he's having this dialogue with God, which is very graphic in nature. And it certainly describes sometimes the frustration that we feel when you're going through difficult times. Uh, in your life. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Very important that we recognize 
the presence of God and what that means in our lives. Nevertheless, Moses was overwhelmed, stressed, uh, and at his wit's end. Verse number 16, the Lord responds to Moses. He says, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel. So God says, I'm going to get you some help. Uh, I want you to grab 70 men of Israel, bring them to me. In verse number 17, uh, the Lord says, I will take uh, of the spirit that is upon you and I will put the same on them. And so Moses was a humble man. Uh, Moses had a, a, a character. Moses had attributes. Uh, Moses had a spiritual gift uh, that was necessary and that God used to lead over 2 million people. Uh, and because Moses couldn't bear it alone, he had 70 elders that were brought to him and God took his spirit and put on them that they might manage uh, all of the frustrations and the anxiety uh, of the people. In verse number 18, uh, then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourself tomorrow and you shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, here it comes, who will give us meat uh, to eat? And so again, the, the frustration uh, lied in what the people wanted as opposed to what God had given. And sometimes we just want what we want. It's not that they were starving. It's not that they did not have food to eat. It's just that they didn't have what they wanted to eat. Uh, and so they wanted some meat. They, I don't know if they wanted some meatloaf. Uh, maybe they wanted some chicken. You know, uh, they wanted some steak. You know, they, they, were, they were talking about meat to eat. And of course, you know, that they have uh, plenty of flocks and herds. Uh, we talked about that before. Um, now, when we look at at, um, um, at verse number 19, watch what the Lord says, verse number 19. He said, you shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor 10 days, nor 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> uh, and, and becomes loathsome to you. Somebody said, be careful what you ask for. Sometimes what you crave, uh, amen, God can take that same thing that you desire and that you crave and cause that thing to be loathsome to you. The same thing that you wanted so bad, he can cause that thing to be a curse cause that thing to be a frustration uh, to you. He says, because you have despised the Lord who was among you and have wept before him saying, why did we ever come up out of Egypt? Now, isn't that a slap in God's face? For 400 years, they were crying, uh, uh, you know, Lord, save us. Uh, you know, is, is God here? Does God hear us? And here we are being uh, whipped and beaten, uh, uh, by Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and and, and we're we're a broken people. Uh, and then the Lord answers their petition and prayer. And then soon as they get out of Egyptian bondage, God brings them out uh, with a mighty hand. Uh, they said, "Why did you take us out of the land? Or why did you let us go?" And, and and oh, we remember the leeks and the melons and the watermelon and the fruit from the vine, and everything was so wonderful in Egypt. Now, isn't that a peculiar people? And so um, a slap in God's face, God delivered them and they're complaining about being delivered. In verse 21, and, and Moses said, the people who I am among are 600,000 men on foot. Uh, amen. So he's talking about the soldiers, just the men of, among the people. Yet you have said, I will give them meat uh, that they may eat for a whole month. So you got two million folk and God saying that I'm going to give them enough meat, not for one, two, three days, a week, uh, but for a whole month. All of these people. Now, how many of you know that God can do it? Can he do it? Yes. You know, a, a lot of times we limit God. We limit the power of God based on our limitations. And so you've got all of these people out there. And God is saying uh, they're going to have enough meat that's going to be coming out their nostrils, you know. Um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, you want to go to that uh, buffet, uh, amen, and, 
And, and you know, sometimes back in the day, I don't know if y'all still doing it these days, you go up there to Myrtle Beach and uh, I say, you go to the calabash and you try to eat the calabash out of out of a house and home, you want to put them up under. You want to take them out of out of out of business all by yourself. So you take your plate, you pile your plate up, and you sit down and eat, and you you still got food in your cheeks, and you talking about I'm getting ready to go back up there and get some more. I mean, it just it's just ridiculous. You know, sometimes that's gluttony. That's exactly what that is. That's gluttony. Yeah, somebody recognize that. Some sometimes we just uh thank you, Sister Gigi. You right on point, sister. Amen. But that's exactly what that is. Amen. Just gluttony. I, I just want it and I want all of it. And I'm, you know, and, and you know, uh, you keep eating like that. You're going to find yourself in MUSC, the Medical University of South Carolina. And, and the same thing that you wanted is the same thing that got you in the hospital, all that kind of stuff. So you got to be careful about what you crave, what you desire, what you want. And, and it all starts with that I, you know, sin has a letter that we need to always remember. And it's right in the middle of the word sin. And that's I, it's all about me, you know? And so that is a, a, a problem. I, I think about our prayers unto God. Uh, and sometimes people think that uh, the privilege and the spiritual blessing of prayer is a mechanism by which the children of God, uh, Christians get God to do for us. Amen. How can I get God? I need God to do this. I need to go. Oh, I, that's what I'll do. I, I'm going to pray. But see, prayer is not about what you get from God, but how God can use you. You know, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. So it's not so much about what I can get from God, but what I can do for my Lord. And, and so we have to get the I out of our mentality, because a lot of times that is the core problem in our lives. We're always thinking from a me mentality and, and such is the case with the children of Israel. In verse 22, he says, shall the flocks and herds be slaughtered for them? And so it's almost as if Moses is doubting that God can feed all of these people for an entire month. And so, you know, well, you know, where are you going to get the food from God? Uh, we're going to slaughter all these herds. And uh, is, is that where the food's going to come from? Uh, amen. You know, again, limitations because we don't know how God's going to do it. We don't think God can do it. We don't know where God's going to get it from. And, and so we begin uh, to doubt. Uh, he says, or shall all the fish of the sea, this is in verse 22, or shall all the fish of the sea uh, be gathered together for them to provide enough for, uh, uh, for them. And so, so uh, imagine all these people. How are you going to feed all these people? So uh, this is the situation. And they're crying to Moses, but they forgot that we serve an all-sufficient God. A God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to ask or think. Ephesians chapter 3 lets us know about that. In verse 24, and the Lord said to Moses, has the Lord's arm, uh, amen, been shortened? Now you say, now you shall see whether uh, what I say will happen to you or not. God is saying, I can do it. God is saying, trust me. i never forget, uh, we had a Christian uh, one time years ago, uh, was having some difficulty and was going to get uh, evicted uh, from um, her, her, her place uh, where she stayed, apartment. Uh, and, uh, the landlord, uh, had given 14 days and, and had already shut the water off and all of this kind of stuff. And, and we're trying to find a place, uh, alternative location for, uh, her to, uh, live, reside, pack up and move. And a lot of frustration, a lot of stress, uh, and, and, and where are we going to find a solution? And so, uh, I talked to the sister and I said, I know God that's able. And we prayed. Uh, and I got off the phone, made some calls, and I didn't hear much back from anybody. Uh, and then later on, I get a call from her. And she says, uh, did you call the, the sheriff? I said, no, I didn't call the sheriff. She said, well, the sheriff showed up uh, and, and, and got the landlord or would not turn my water on, said that the landlord could not evict me in 14 days. He got to go through the courts and all of these kinds of things. So the water's on and lights on, all of these kinds of things. And she was just amazed. And I told her that God is able. 
God is able. God is able. And, and so, so too often times, you know, we pray, but are we praying amiss? Or do we really believe that God indeed can? And that's one of the things that we have to uh, recognize, that God is sure enough uh, able. All right. Um, so uh, when we look down just a little bit further. Um, so Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. Verse 24, verse 25. Uh, then the Lord came down in the cloud, spoke to him. Uh, and took of the spirit that was upon him uh, and placed, the Bible says, the same spirit on the 70 elders. Uh, and so that, that's very important. Now, uh, commercial break. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So God takes of Moses' spirit, uh, his gift, and he puts on the 70 uh, elders. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, um, in verse number uh, 18, well, verse 12 through 28, it talks about, you know, uh, spiritual gifts and diversity. It talks about the eye, the hand, uh, the feet, and all those kinds of things. Verse 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he uh, pleased. And so uh, God has uh, given us gifts uh, and placed us in the body uh, as he sees fit. Uh, look with me, if you will, to Romans chapter number 12, verse number 6. Romans chapter 12, verse number 6. Romans 12 and verse 6. Let me get a reader really quickly, if we could. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given of us, let us use them in prophecy. Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. All right. And then it talks about ministry and other different gifts. So we see in verse number six, thank you, Brother Coon, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. And so God dispatches gifts among his people. We all have gifts, different gifts for the benefit of the body. And so what God did is he took of the gift that he had given Moses and he put that same spirit on the 70 elders. Let's turn back to uh, Numbers chapter number 11. Uh, Gigi, Sister Gigi, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, God did the same thing and he'll do the same thing now. If you don't use the gift that he gave you, he'll take it from you and give it to somebody else. Yes, yeah. So we got to use our, our talents. We got to use our ability. We got to use our gifts. Uh, too often times we're... Too often times we're sitting on the premises instead of standing on the promises. And so we, we've got to be using what God has given us. You know, I appreciate that. Got to use what God has given us uh, because it's for the benefit of the body. Romans 14 uh, talks about edification and the gifts that God have given to the church. It's for the edifying of the body. And so when we all use our gift, the body has all that it needs. The collective body of Christians in a congregation have all that we need uh, among the gifts that God had distributed. So everybody's in the body for a reason and, and, and uh, on purpose and for a purpose. And so we have to be purposeful in what we do and use what God has given. In Numbers chapter number 11, thank you, ma'am. Uh, verse 25, the, the lat latter part of verse 25. Let's see. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. Verse 26, uh, but two men had remained in the camp. Uh, the name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. Eldad, Medad. Uh, all right. And, and the spirit rested upon them. Now they were among those listed, but who had not, those listed, but who had not gone uh, out to the tabernacle yet, they prophesied uh, in the camp. So he had 70, and then there were two others that received that same spirit. And, and this thing kind of frustrated uh, uh, Joshua, and we're going to see that. In verse uh, 27, the young man ran and told Moses, he said, Eldad and Medad, uh, they're prophesying in the camp. How did that happen? Uh, Joshua says in verse 28, uh, he says, uh, Moses' assistant, one of the church men answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Listen to Moses. Moses said, 
Are you zealous for my sake? Uh, oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets uh, and that uh, the Lord would put his spirit uh, upon them. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if all God's people had uh, his spirit? Now, isn't that the case in, in the church today? When we are, when uh, an individual is added to the body of Christ, Acts 2.38, uh, he receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and so here's Moses and he's saying, I wish all of these folk had the spirit of God upon them, resting and abiding within them. And that's uh, the difference today. Here we are, children of God. And when we are added to the body of Christ through the obedience of the gospel, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And it's our job not to quench the spirit, but to be led by the spirit, allow the spirit to lead God and to direct us. And so you have as a child of God, the spirit of God, but too oftentimes we quench the spirit. We want to go one way and the spirit wants us to go another way. And so there's that tug of war between my will and thy will. And, and so if we allow God to have his way and have his say, uh, we'll be in a much better situation in our individual lives and even as a collective body, uh, allowing uh, the Holy Spirit uh, to guide and direct us. And so this was the desire of Moses. Now then, we get down to verse number 31. And the Bible lets us know that um, that a wind went out from the Lord uh, and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering. God said, I'm going to bring enough meat for a month for everybody and, and left the quail fluttering uh, near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side. So however long it takes you to walk this way, a whole bunch of quail. However long it takes you to walk that way, a whole bunch of quail. And so he says uh, about two cubits uh, above the surface of uh, the ground. So uh, I would say about uh, three feet uh, above the surface of the ground. He would measure a cubic from uh, the elbow to the, uh, the longest finger. So two cubits uh, from the surface of the ground. So they were fluttering. A, a wind blew them in fluttering uh, and and being uh, a couple uh, feet above the ground, they were able to gather and they had plenty of meat. And, and so now all of a sudden they, they want, they, they take uh, God's blessing and they turn it into a calabash. So now they had the calabash, you know, God's folk don't know how to behave, you know. Okay. Now verse 32, uh, and, and all the people stayed up all that night, uh, uh, all that day, all that night, and the next day, and gathered the quail. He who gathered the least uh, gathered ten or, uh, omers, um, and they spread them out before, uh, spread them out for themselves all around the camp. So we're talking about sixty bushes, bushels. Uh, how many of you like uh, oysters? You know, get get you a good bushel. No, all, all right, sixty, sixty bushes. I, I mean. And that's the one that gathered the least, 10 omers. That's a lot of quail. Uh, and, and so, you know, uh, you, you ever, anyway, I've had all kinds of experiences. But anyway, uh, in verse, verse number 33, but while the meat was still between their teeth, you're crying on the Lord about, about the meat. Mm. Amen. So you done got you your 60, 60 bushels, you salivating. You done cook up some food, whatever the case may be. You ready to have your your chicken McQuail, you know, sandwich. All right. But while the meat was between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people. And the Lord struck the people uh, with a very great plague. And, and so God, let me tell God doesn't, doesn't appreciate complaining. And this is what God's people were doing. Not only were they complaining, but they talked bad about the Lord's provision. Uh, you know, God was leading them, but they were saying we were better off in Egypt. And so God says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you what you asked for. But before you can chew it, I, I'm going to deal with you. And so uh, this is what we are looking at. Uh, let's look at Isaiah chapter 30 
verse 1 through 5. Let me get a reader at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, uh, and verse 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1 through 5. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who walk to go down to Egypt, and have not asked my advice, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. And trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. For his princes were exiled, and his ambassadors came to hang. They were all ashamed of a people who could not benefit them or be helped or benefit, but a shame and also a reproach. Here's God's people. Now all of a sudden, they're out when they're out of Egypt, all they can do is talk good about Egypt. Oh, in Egypt we had the cucumbers and the melons. Relying on Egypt. Oh, in Egypt, we had this. Oh, in Egypt, we had that. And so God is talking about his rebellious children uh, who take counsel, but not of him. Uh, you know, they add sin to sin. They devise plans, but not of his spirit. They trust in Egypt. They trust in Pharaoh, but they don't trust in God. And as a result, he says, what you put your trust in is going to be your shame. Uh, and, and they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Uh, and so Egypt will be their humiliation. Uh, and so this is what we have to realize. He says, uh, they were all ashamed of, the, of a people who could not benefit them or be help or benefit, but a shame and also a reproach. Amen. So, so you know, we got to be mindful of who God is. Too often times, you know, you put your trust in something else instead of putting your trust in God. And this oftentimes happens when you can't save yourself or deal with a particular situation. You do everything you can come up with. And when you have exhausted every avenue, now you say, let us pray. The opposite should be the case. What we should do is go to God when? First. But what we do is we try, we go to our uncle, go here, go there, go all over the place. Oh, I'm so tired, there ain't nothing I can do. All right, let us pray. And then you don't even believe the prayer. And so what we have to do is we have to learn to rely on God. God never wanted us to be independent from him. He wants us to depend on him. He wants us to petition him, come to him. But we use God, oftentimes Christians use God as a last resort. You know, kind of the spare tire. When all of these are broke down and I can't fix it myself and there's nothing else I can do, well, it's time to call on God. No, you go to God first. God will make a way. And the Bible doesn't know that before you call, he'll already answer. And so too often times, we fail to go to God and we sit in our pity party pity uh, party of struggles and we simply sit in a, in a seat that says, have not. And James says, you have not. Why? Yes. Because you ask not. And so a lot of times we're in a situation of our own devising. We could have took the matter to the Lord and been out of the situation months ago. But you don't know what to do. And somebody said, let us pray. You're like, oh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, go ahead and pray. Go ahead. You don't believe it yourself. <laughs> you, you know? And so this, this is the frustration. Somebody said, let us pray. You said, they're thinking, oh, yeah, that's going to work. God is able. But the issue is, who are you relying on? Are you relying on a dollar? Or are you are relying on God? Are you relying on people? Putting your trust in man? Or are you going to put your trust in God? And so that is uh, the case. And so God dealt with his people uh, because they yielded to the intense uh, craving. Uh, and that was certainly problematic. Now, let's make a connection between chapter number 11 and chapter number 12. In chapter number 12, uh, the Bible says, Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman uh, whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Uh, all right. 
Uh, and so it's, it's, it's very difficult to, with all certainty, uh, make the case that um, this is not Zipporah. You remember Zipporah? Uh, she is uh, Moses' wife. But now we see here that Miriam and Aaron were uh, speaking out or complaining because uh, Moses had uh, married an Ethiopian woman, a, a Cushite, if you will. Um, it's a good case, actually, to be made that this is another woman. I, I don't know what happened to Zipporah. Uh, I don't know if she died or he took another wife. I don't know what the case may be. But if it was Zipporah, his wife from the land of Midian, um, Mo, uh, Aaron and Miriam would have had plenty of time years ago to go ahead and complain about uh, Zipporah. So it is surmised that this may be another wife, um, not knowing what happened to Zipporah or whatever the case may be. And so here we are, and uh, he just finished dealing with God's people. And God's people, here you go, uh, a couple million of them were complaining from their tents, crying, weeping over Moses. So who will give us meat to eat? He's so frustrated uh, and, 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 and overwhelmed at his wit's end because there's a problem that he can't solve, of course. He takes it to God. He's not the solution. He's the mediator between the people and the divine. Uh, but he's frustrated. And so God gives him 70 elders. And just when you think you have a reprieve, some help, a solution, whoo, that was a rough one. Here comes your brother and your sister complaining about your wife. And so um, it, when, when you talk about leadership, there are burdens of leadership. You know, a lot of times people um, look at leadership and say, oh, that would sure be nice. I, I'd sure like to lead. But the, the, the burdens of leadership are, are very unique. You know, you get the public praise, but then you get the private criticism. And sometimes the private criticism is uh, public and you always get blamed for everything as if, you know, everything is uh, something that you created and you can solve everything and all of these kinds of things. So here's Moses and Moses is God's man. And Moses is dealing with the children of Israel. They don't like when they can't eat. Is Moses' problem. They don't like when they can't drink. Is Moses' problem. They don't like when the menu ain't what they want. Moses' problem. And, and so now God dealt with that situation with the 70 elders to help bear uh, the load of the people. And, and now he's got issues with his brother and his sister. Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sisters. And to some extent, uh, they are leaders among the people themselves. As you know, uh, Aaron is the high priest. And when we think about uh, Miriam, Miriam uh, was a leader in her own right. And the Bible called her a prophetess. Uh, look with me, if you will, to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. In Exodus chapter number 15, when they came out of Egyptian bondage, uh, Pharaoh and his army drowned in the sea. Uh, Miriam was leading the choir. And so when you look down to verse number 20 of Exodus 15, listen to your Bible. Then Miriam, who's Miriam? Moses' sister, but Miriam the what? The prophetess, uh, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her uh, with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Now, you know, they had a good song going on there. And, and I mean, it, Miriam, man, you know, they, they going on, they, they shouting and we out and oh, praise the Lord. And I mean, she had everything but the pom-poms. Uh, and and I, I mean, you know, when them sisters get to singing, it's something else. You remember how mad they made Saul when they said David his 10,000 and uh, Saul his thousands killed thousands and David his ten thousand Saul had a heart attack uh, but 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 here, here here comes Miriam and she's got the whole car she got the all the sisters together and boy they having a party on the shore on the other side and she is leading the choir you know they were having a good time up in there and, and so 
So here is in Numbers chapter 12, one more again, uh, Moses' brother and sister, Aaron, high priest, Miriam with her incredible uh, uh, leadership and, uh, and influence there, you know. Um, you know, Moses didn't do everything by himself, you know. And so the Bible says that now they got an issue with Moses. Right after everybody was crying on Moses and, and had Moses about to check himself uh, into the fifth floor, you know, you know, Mo Moses, Moses needed some depression medicine. He, was good. he needed some medicine. He took his burdens to the Lord, praise the Lord. So now they're talking about his wife. So, so now, now it's even more personal, right? Uh, verse number two. So they said, uh, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Uh, has not, has he not spoken through us also? And then the Bible says again, as we read in uh, chapter number 11, verse one, and the Lord heard it. Be careful what you say out your mouth. Uh, people, people are so quick to speak. Doesn't the Bible say be swift to hear? Uh, and slow to speak. And, and so here they are. They're complaining. Uh, and, and their complaints. Um, surmise. Have to do with. Uh, perhaps recognition. Uh, for their part. And what they do. You know. It looked like Moses getting all the glory. Moses getting all the light. And everything. You know. Moses solving all kind of stuff. And, and, and they ain't saying nothing about us. And, and, and then, then they look at Moses' wife and now all of a sudden they got a target here and, and they want to talk bad about Moses. Uh, and, and so uh, this is problematic. Now, let's look at it just a few things. Let me get a reader at Romans 14 and 4. Romans 14 and 4. And let me get another reader at James 4 and 10. Romans 14 and 4, James 4 and 10. I need uh, two scriptural uh, readings. Um, what does the Bible say in Romans 14 and 4? Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will make indeed he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. Y'all hear that? So they're talking about Moses. And, and and they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? In other words, Moses, you ain't the only one God talking to, you know. Um, and so they have a problem with Moses calling, all right. Um, and so be, be careful how you talk about the man of God. You know, you, you got a problem, you better take it to the Lord. Because, you know, if, if God had a problem with that man, that man wouldn't be there, all right. And, and so we, we've got to be very careful and not be so rash with our mouth because something ain't going the way we think it ought to go. And so they're talking about Moses. Uh, and the Bible says, as uh, Brother Cooper read, who are you to judge another servant? You know, he's God's servant. He's God's man. Uh, to his own master, he stands or he falls. Uh, indeed, he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand. Uh, who has James 4, 4 and 10? Humble yourself, thank you, Sister Monique, uh, in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. All right, so back in Numbers chapter 12, let's see if Moses was humble. Well, in verse number three, the Bible says, now the man Moses was very, what? Humble. More than all men who were on the face of the earth. And so in all of this strife that was brought uh, to him by Miriam and Aaron, you know, Miriam's name is listed first, Aaron as well. Uh, but with Miriam's name listed first, she's probably the instigator or the most vocal. And we see that with the punishment that she gets a little later on uh, from God. Um, but Moses doesn't say a word while he's being attacked personally. So he was attacked by the people, can't please the people, attacked by his brothers and sisters, uh, uh, brother and sister. Uh, and, and God heard all of the criticism Moses was getting, um, and, and he, was, he was being humble. Uh, and, and then the Bible says in verse number four, suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out here, come out, you three. Don't that sound familiar, somebody? Mm -hmm. 
You know, you're in the room cutting up, making all kind of noise, and all of a sudden, Daddy said, get on out here. All three of you. <laughs> all three of you. Amen. Uh, uh, to the tabernacle meeting, so they, they came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle. Now, you know everybody in their tent been listening as hard as they could, stretching their neck, looking. They see the tabernacle, Moses and Aaron go in there, you know, at the cloud descend, verse number five. The Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood uh, in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Now, now uh, Aaron and Miriam, they're going forward. God done, God says, step on up here. Then he says, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. He says, I speak to him in a dream. But here's the difference. He says, not so with my servant Moses. Well, what, dis what distinguishes Moses? He says, Moses is faithful in all my house. See, see, you know, you're talking about the man of God, but you really don't know who you're talking about. God knows his character and God called him for a reason. And so he says, Moses is faithful. He also says, and I speak to him face to face. And he also says, even plainly, not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. You remember uh, Moses says, Lord, uh, amen. Uh, uh, we don't, uh, don't bring us up if you don't go with us. And then he says, Lord, show me your glory. And, and so Moses uh, was very dear to God, as we all are. See, God loves all of us, but all of us don't have the same call. Every single one of us are loved by God. Uh, every single one of us are somebody in God's sight. But not everybody has been called to the same calling. And, and so here they are dealing with Moses, and it's God that called Moses. Matter of fact, Moses ain't want to go in the first place. When God called Moses, Moses said, Lord, uh, you know, I don't speak well. Uh, Lord, uh, you know, take this one. Uh, Lord, after God dealt with all his all of his excuses, uh, uh, you know, God said, who made your mouth? You know, and, and matter of fact, isn't that your brother Aaron coming? Y'all remember that in Exodus 4? And so uh, Moses was, was humbled. Moses was God's man. Moses had the character. Moses was everything God needed. And God had a calling on Moses' life that didn't show up until he was 80 years old. He spent 40 years in Egypt getting trained in the best schools of the Egyptians. 40 years in the land of Midian, being humbled and broken and, and leaving his life of Egypt and being a shepherd, uh, learning how to guide sheep. David was a shepherd, learning how to guide sheep. And then after God's 80 years of training, now God says, I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And so you have to recognize that who you're dealing with, when you're dealing with the man, you don't know what he's been through. You don't know how God has prepared him for where he placed him. And, and too often times, you know, the little things that we see, we find criticism and, and that's enough to, to start some hoopla and all kind of mess. Well, God will take care of that. You know, God, God will deal with that. And that's what we're seeing right here. Um, and so, um, the burdens of leadership. Uh, let me just show you something really quickly in Numbers 16. Number 16. The same frustrations or accusations, similar accusations, I, I wouldn't say the same, similar accusations that his brother and his sisters had that, you know, has the Lord spoken to you only, you know, uh, wanting to be exalted to some extent or get more uh, attention, more respect for their calling as well by God. Um, now, this, this, this situation that we're reading about in Numbers 12 had to do with Moses' wife, some criticism. Now, in Numbers 16, listen to your Bible in verse number one and following. Now, Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, uh, on the sun and on 
the son of uh, Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel. How much did they ro rose up with? Now all of a sudden, here comes another uprising. 250 of the leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. All right? Somebody got a problem. Verse 3. They gathered together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, here they go, you take too much upon yourselves. For all the congregation is holy, uh, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? Now Moses was a humbler man. You know, Mo Moses ain't over there parading around and, and shining robes and everything and, and all of this kind of stuff. But Moses is getting these criticisms, criticisms of the people, criticisms of his brother and sister. Criticisms of leaders of the people who think that Moses, we need to take you down a notch, you know, and, and then God had to deal with that. So this is, these are the types of burdens of leadership that Moses had to deal with. And a lot of times people only see this glory, but they don't know your story. Um, yeah, they don't know your story. Now, in Numbers chapter number 12, one more again. In Numbers 12, verse number 9. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, Miriam, Aaron, uh, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, leprous, as white as snow. Imagine that. Uh, and then Aaron turned toward uh, Miriam, and there she was, a what? A leper. Everybody still on the line? Everybody all right? Uh, all right? So Aaron, now Aaron's terrified. The cloud, God left. He turns and sees a sister. Now she's white, full of leprous. Aaron said to Moses, now he's going to Moses, Oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have what? Sin. In which we have sinned. So, so now uh, he is uh, interceding on, now, now he's, he's petitioning Moses. Moses, please go talk to the Lord. Uh, he says, please do not let uh, her be as one dead, uh, whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Imagine what she looked like. Great goodness. So Moses did what? What did Moses do? Okay, so what is Moses doing? Moses is interceding. He's going in between. He's speaking on behalf of, you know, Sunday, we, we talked about Abraham, uh, advocate, interceding uh, on behalf of Sodom and Lot in particular, who was in Sodom. Uh, how many of you are remember in Mark chapter number two, uh, the four friends, uh, and they had a, a friend who, the four men and they had a friend uh, who was lame. Y'all remember that? Uh, and they took the man uh, on, on a cot and they wanted to bring him to Jesus. All right. They couldn't get through the door because of the crowd. So they took the man up on top of the house, tore the roof off the sucker. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Tore the roof off. The, okay. So they tore the roof up. <laughs> So he tore the roof off and they lowered the man to Jesus. Jesus looks up and he sees their faith uh, and he said, you know, your faith has made you well. These four men were interceding, if you will. And this is kind of what the position of the child of God is. We've got to go to God on behalf of other folk. Amen. Go to God on behalf of other folk. Somebody got a problem. Somebody's got an issue. You know what we do? We take that to the Lord. All right. So here's Moses, and he's and he's uh, been petitioned by Aaron on behalf of his sister Miriam, and Moses cries out to the Lord. Now remember, Miriam was just talking about him, talking about him bad too. Isn't this something? When the same people that talk to you like a dog 
Y'all know the rest of the story? Yes. Are the same folk you got to pray for. Right. Amen. Amen. They're the same folk you got to pray for. Yes. Didn't the Bible say pray for your enemies? Pray for those who persecute you? Uh, say all manner of things against you, evil, you know, all of that kind of stuff. These are the same folk that we need to pray for. Prayers of intercession. Now, and that's very important, okay? Then verse 13, 14, then the Lord said to Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, she would, she, uh, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, after which she may be received again. So Moses had to intercede on behalf of the very ones that was talking about him like a doe. Talk about him bad. Last passage, just illustrative, Judge uh, Job 42. Job 42 and 7 and verse number 8. Job 42, 7 and 8. Go to the last chapter of Job. Y'all remember Job had some uh, struggles, right? Uh, and, 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 you know, the devil had took everything, his family from him and afflicted him with uh, painful boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And then the Bible lets know that he had three friends that came to him. They sit and watch him for about a week, and then they begin to hurl accusations against Job. How many of you know the story? Yeah. Anybody know the story? All right. Let's look at the end of the story really quickly. Verse 7 and 8. That's all I want. Uh, and so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. For you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. Now therefore take for yourself seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer uh, up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant who? Job. And my servant Job. What's Job supposed to do? He'll pray for you. He's going to pray for you. He's going to pray for you. You were talking about him. You were accusing him. That Job, you must have done wrong. You, you know, had all your speeches. Uh, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. That's all I wanted to say on that. How sometimes the people that do you wrong are the same folk that you need to pray for. And the folk that do you wrong, don't be surprised if they got to come to you. Yes. Now they're coming to you and uh, I, I'm so sorry. I, I apologize. I, I was wrong. You know, uh, forgive me. Pray for me. And you know what you should do? You should forgive them and you should pray for them. But God will bring you to a place when you're wrath with you, when you're rash with your mouth and have you go right back to the same person that you were talking bad about and have to ask forgiveness. And that same person is going to have to pray for you. And so, be swift to hear and slow to speak. We, we pray that something was said to encourage our hearts even on tonight uh, as we study the Word of God. Let's continue to allow God to strengthen us and, and teach us that we may do better than those who have gone on before us. We thank those who are joining us, uh, joining with us through Facebook Live. Uh, join us on Lord's Day morning at 9.30 as we uh, magnify the master in worship service. We're looking forward to your coming. May God bless, strengthen, and keep you. Uh,